Hello everyone and welcome to N2M Tech Talk. I'm your host, Michael Oliverio, and today we will be covering our Microsoft Bookings series. In this video, we'll focus on creating appointments for your bookings page. This will allow people to click on your public bookings page link, pick an appointment type, and schedule a meeting with you. Please keep in mind that in order to use the bookings page properly, you'll need to make sure that your calendar is up to date as people will just pick the available time you have shown on your bookings page. I'll give you guys some tips later in this video on how to manage that. Let's start by clicking on go to my bookings page. This will bring you to the configuration page for your booking site. By default, you might see one here already. Click on the ellipses within that one, go ahead and delete it, and it'll go ahead and give you a fresh start. I'm gonna leave mine here since I'm gonna use it later on in the video. You're also gonna see that there's a public and a private booking link that you can make. Public is gonna be for anybody out there to click your link and book a meeting for you. Where private is gonna be only for people that you choose to book meetings for you. So for this video, let's click on the plus and we'll create a public booking link. Now it's time to configure your page. Start by giving it a title. This will be what others see when they're choosing the meeting option for you. I'm gonna call mine content creation. Categories are tied to Outlook. These are your Outlook categories that you have set up within your email tied to the meeting choices that people choose. So if content creation was a category of red, then when you have the meeting booked in Outlook, it'll show up as red for you. I'm not gonna do much with categories today. Um, that's something you guys can kind of play with. Description is a simple, quick explanation of what this meeting is. So for us, it's gonna be website design. Location is gonna be where the meeting actually takes place. Since I use Microsoft Teams, I've got my Microsoft Teams switch turned on here and all my meetings will send with my Microsoft Teams linked already attached to it. Duration, this is where you can say if it's gonna be a 15 minute, 30 minute, hour long meeting. This is typically determined by the type of meeting that you're gonna do. So consultations might be a 15 minute consultation, website design might be 30 minutes. So we're gonna do 30 minutes today for ours. Public and private, we've already talked about in the beginning. Uh, we're gonna keep ours as a public meeting here. Append your booking page to your email signature. Um, I love this one, I'm gonna leave it turned on. What this will do is at the bottom of my signature, which I'll go ahead and show in just a little bit here, it's gonna put a link to your public bookings page for anybody to click on and schedule a meeting with you. Right below that is our top collaborators. I turn this off, I don't need to send it internally. Anybody internally can book with me through um, Outlook already. So I'm gonna just remove that checkbox if it's on and remove anybody who was part of that, that list. Customizing your schedule um, within Outlook, Outlook.com, Office, you can actually set up regular meeting working hours in there. And you can say that I'm in the office between seven and three every single day. Um, if you have that already configured, then you can just use my regular meeting hours for this meeting. However, I made the comment earlier that it's important to make sure that your calendar is up to date all of the time. And because of that, I like to choose specific days and times for specific types of meetings. And in this case, if you click the down arrow, you'll see use custom availability hours. So I'm going to click on that. And it's going to go ahead and open up this little calendar here. Um, Sundays and Saturdays for this kind of meeting. Nope, I'm not going to do them. I'm only going to say let's do Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So if we turn off Monday, turn off Friday. And on Wednesdays, I have something in the morning already booked. So I want to say I can only do between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. on Wednesdays. What this will do is say, when anybody clicks on my link and they want to do content creation meetings, any available times within these three days here are the only times they'll be able to book on my schedule for this. You can even set a date range. So this would be like if you have a very specific event coming up and people need to talk about what's going on with that event, you can open up this bookings for those specific days. Let's go ahead and expand advanced options and then scroll down. First, you'll see buffering before and after a meeting. This setting won't allow you to book back-to-back -back meetings using bookings, but rather bookings will read your calendar and see if you have a meeting for up to the next five, 10 or 15 minutes before, depending on your choice here. So if you have a five minute buffer before and a 15 minute buffer after, 
then your availability is going to be limited to any time that has a meeting that goes up until the meeting point that you want to start or anything after that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and remove these for now, but just keep that in mind for later in the, in the video. And then right under that, we have our limit start time interval. Uh, what this basically says is, do you want to allow meetings to be scheduled every five minutes, every 10 minutes, every 15 minutes for that 30 minutes? So if you have it set to five minutes, you're going to see 11, 11.05, 11.10, 11.15. If you have it set to 15 minutes, you'll see 11, 11.15, 11.30, 11.45, 11.45, And if you have it set to hourly, then you'll see 11, 12, 1, 2. And that's how the intervals will work based on the choice you make here. Minimum lead time. This is basically going to protect you from somebody booking a meeting two minutes before it starts. So you have to determine how often are you looking at your calendar, how often do you see your meetings come in, and how much lead time do you need based on the type of meeting that it is. Um, if it's a consultation that they just want to talk to you, one hour might be fine. But if it's something where you have prep work, then you might want to say, you know what, I need a whole day of lead time before somebody can book this and set that to one day. And then the second part is the maximum lead time. Uh, this is basically they can't book anything more than 90 days out, 60 days out, 14 days out. Uh, it really kind of controls how far out somebody can block your time off. Uh, so if you, you travel a lot and you don't know when you're traveling, then you're going to want to do something more like 30 days for your, your lead time on that one. Email reminders. You can simply add a reminder email. This first one here will send an email to the attendee before the meeting. I like the one hour option, so it gives them a one hour notice saying, hey, don't forget, you have a meeting today, and you can even put a nice little message in here if you want to. And then if you have a meeting that requires some follow-up actions, or you want them to schedule another meeting with you down the road, then you have an email follow-up, and it's the same kind of thing. You click on the email follow-up, and you say, you know what, let's say two days afterwards, just remind them to book another meeting with me, type a little message in here, and save the changes. Once we're done doing all of that, Go ahead and hit save, and it'll close this page and take you back to your My Bookings page. Once you're back to this page, you'll see our content creation meeting request site has now been set up. I've also left the office hours one here. That was that default one, as I wanted to show you what it looked like when you have multiple options when you send out your bookings page. If you want to change your banner, you go ahead and click the ellipses right here. And you're going to say Edit Banner Image. It'll give you some of their default basic ones that they have. Click the one you love, click the X, and then when you share this page, that'll be the banner that people get to see. And finally, you can add this link into your email signature if you'd like to. To do that, we're going to click on Share, Edit Email Settings, choose the email signature that you use, and you'll see it's going to add Book Time to Meet With Me, you want to have the box that checked that says include a link to my bookings page and my signature. Make sure your signatures are all set and then go ahead and hit save. And what that's going to do is all the emails that you send using your signature, that link will be down there. And then anybody can go ahead and click that link and it'll take you to the bookings page that we're going to show you in just a minute here. So now that we have the email signature set up, we have the page configured. Let's take a look at how it looks. So let's click on share. We're going to copy that link. We're going to open a new tab. In here, we're going to paste the link and hit enter. And this is what people will see when they click on your My Bookings link. And that's the one that was also added into your signature. So I left the open office hours here so that you can see the two versions that, that they have. Um, if we click on content creation, you're going to see that I've limited it to Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. If I choose Thursday, I've got my 30 minute interval set up here. If I click on Wednesday, you're going to see nothing starts before 10 and nothing can be booked after 1.30. So 2 p.m. is the dead stop time. It's not the last time that it can actually be booked. And what people will do is they'll click on your link. They'll say next. It'll prompt them for their username or whatever name they want to put, their email. And this is the email that's going to get invited to the meeting and then any kind of a notes. Once they do that, they click book. It'll take just a few minutes, it says. The meeting will be sent. And you'll see that this notification came through saying that you're all set. Clicking that X, you'll see that it has the little information here saying that 
this person scheduled this meeting, this is the time, this is the time zone, it's a Teams meeting, it's for website design. They can reschedule, they can cancel, or they can even schedule a new meeting if they would like so. That completes our tutorial today on configuring your Microsoft's booking page. In our next video, we'll go over how to create company booking pages that will have multiple team members on it so people can choose a meeting and have it pick based on everybody's availability, not just yours. Hope you enjoyed the video. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more content like this and follow us for updates. Thank you and be safe.